Hello and welcome back to Make It Happen Today. So thank you for tuning in for another week with me. If you don't follow me on social media, I wanted to give you a quick update. So if you are following me on any of the podcast channels, the Apple, Spotify, Deezer, any of those, any of the other smaller ones as well, then thank you very much. I wanted to let you know that the videos are now on YouTube. So I've launched five of them, all the ones where I have been hosted on my own for the last five or six weeks. Any of the previous ones are just still on the podcast channels rather than YouTube. But please do check out the channel. I'll link it in the show notes. And for those of you that are following me from YouTube, I have a podcast channel. So I will link all of the different places you can listen again in the show notes below if you are following me on YouTube so thank you so much I'm so proud of myself YouTube is not my forte it's brand new to me so I'm learning as I go how to navigate that so if you see any kind of uh, issues then bear with me I'm new to that Um, but I'm so excited I'm so proud of myself for learning something new and taking a gamble and as always your support means so much to me. So now on to the topic of today when taking a gamble on your career can change your life for the better and I am a big advocate of this I've gone through it myself so I wanted to share my journey because I've started talking quite a bit more about my main career and what I do and letting everybody in the industry know here I am and here's about me and here's my podcast and here's what I believe in so I thought it was a good opportunity to let people know about how I got into the gambling industry and how my career has panned out so I got into the industry purely by chance back in 2006 so that's scary 15 years in the same industry and doing a very similar role actually for the whole 15 years which is surprising for me but um I love it and I wanted to use this episode as a way of perhaps giving you a little bit of a kick or a little bit of motivation to know that everything does work out and we've talked about this before um even when something bad happens. So for me, I always, I was always quite driven anyway. I always had um, goals that I, you know, I love shoes and I love handbags and I really wanted to be independent. My dad taught me to be quite an independent girl and then quite an independent woman, obviously from that. So I always strive to be the best I could be in any job that I had. I always tried to push the boundaries of what my job scope was. And I just had a lot of pride in the work that I did. And so it led me on a little bit of a journey through various different industries. I mean, I covered, think I should covered shop work. I worked on like a older people's clothing retailer. I worked in a supermarket. I worked for a hi-fi manufacturer. I worked for the National Farmers Union. I mean, what are the chances of that? I worked there and actually that one was quite hellish. I um, worked with a woman that was very heavily pregnant and her and her boss was looking for support for her. And it was between me and another girl and the boss wanted me and she wanted another girl. So they hired the other girl, which is fine. I respect that. And um, they realized actually that they were growing quite rapidly. So the boss called me back to hire me. Well, that did not go well. She absolutely hated me. I don't know what it was about me. We did not gel. And she made my life a misery for probably five months. And I stuck it out and I had to go all the way from Kent into London, quite far into London. It used to take me nearly an hour and a half to get to the office, but I was sticking with it, sticking with it. I remember I asked to go to the doctors one day. She told me no. And then when she saw that I had an infection in my leg, she had a go at me for that, that I was a stupid girl and why hadn't I booked to doctors and I should have changed doctors to move one around the corner from the office rather than the doctor that had been my doctor for, you know, 15 years. Um, 
so it was that kind of thing, but it, it made me quite resilient. So rather than being depressed every day, it made me quite resilient to what life is thrown at me and, and kind of working through that, what was essentially bullying. And eventually I did give up. I did quit. I'd had enough. Um, it just to travel for three hours a day to be bullied for eight hours wasn't really for me. So I left there and um, I don't even remember what I did next. I must have got some sort of job. Anyway, I ended up working um, in Beckenham at the time. And again, that was about 45 minutes from where I was living. But I loved it. I worked with a group of guys in a hi-fi shop and I ran all of the installations. So I got to work with the owner of Gala Bingo. We had a lot of famous footballers on our books. So I would coordinate with all of the installers and make sure that they would be able to get their kit on time, loaded into their van to get to the customer's homes, liaising with the customer about their needs and wants and wishes and timings making sure the supplies were there. So it's quite a high powered role. And I think I was 19 or 20. And during that role was the end of my engagement. Quite spectacularly, actually, my um, ex-fiance decided to throw the ring at me while at a corporate dinner. So that was quite interesting. And then took my car and abandoned me. 50 miles away from home. So that was quite an experience to overcome. And, and actually that was quite a lot of years to recover from the pain of that, to be honest. Um, but it kind of made me realize what I will accept and won't accept in relationships. And whilst it did those things, you never fully recover from, honestly. Um, and his reasons I never fully recovered from, but it made me who I am today. and. You know, it is just one of life's lessons, unfortunately. Now, I loved this role. I loved the staff coming back from my personal breakdown. But one thing that happened was my boss started spiraling a little bit out of control. And I think this actually set me up for the industry. So um, he started spiraling. He was a bit crazy. He would call me at three o'clock in the morning because he's off his face can I come and pick him up from a party and drive him and check him into a hotel? His wife would call in the morning and he would ask me, just tell her that I'm in a meeting. Um, and he wasn't. He was recovering from his drink and drug fueled night and I would have to lie to her that he was in meetings. And this bit started becoming more regular and phone calls in the middle of the night. And, you know, I'm 20, 21. This is not... This is really crossing the boundaries, <clears throat> excuse me, of what is acceptable in business. You know, I work very hard and I will take care of the people I work with and I will protect the people I work with. But when you're calling me at all hours, waking me up in the middle of the night and when I'm checking you into hotels and I'm, I'm stared at because I'm 20 years younger than this uh, man, that I look a slightly dodgy, that for me is really starting to cross the boundaries of what I will accept. And you can push, people push you quite far, right? So you can go through quite a lot in your life and, and it makes you who you are today. And I do believe that good and bad experiences make you who you are today. But this started to, to cross the boundaries of, of my level of being comfortable. And he knew that. And so one day he took me out for lunch. He said, Claire, come on, let's go. We'll have lunch. And uh, we started drinking. I'm like, sod it. You literally are driving me insane. So you can pay for this really nice lunch. You can pay for all this booze. I'll, I'll, you know, I moved close after the breakup of the engagement. I moved closer so I knew I could get home. That's fine. Get, I said, I just need to go back to the office. Um, make a couple of quick phone calls. As I finished one of the phone calls, I turned around and he was there, kissed me. Well, let me tell you, that was one of the most insane business things that ever happened. And I call it a business thing because I was in the workplace, but that had never happened to me before. And 
really caught me off guard, really threw me. I honestly, naive or not, did not see that one coming. Um, And it was a really weird situation. And so from there on, I knew that I had to kind of stay because I I was renting in an apartment down the road. So I needed to pay rent. I had a car. I had credit cards. Um, So I started looking for another job. And it just became really, I withdrew quite a lot. And so any situation I would do, literally, I went back to my job description and anything outside of that, I wasn't willing to partake at all. And so because I had been the person that over delivered and overachieved and suddenly stopped, he was not impressed with that at all. Um, And so one day I just remember I was still interviewing at various different companies And one day I just thought, I cannot take this. I cannot, I'm worth more than this. I'm worth more than every day now feeling agitated and on edge. And I just quit. I literally just quit. I hadn't even been offered a role and I thought it's going to work out. Something is going to happen and something is going to work out. And I just quit and walked out. And, um, Honestly, I was scared. I was scared. I had bills every month that I needed to pay, but I just had this feeling in my gut that everything would work out. Now, just before I had quit, I was interviewing in different places. And one of the places I walked into was a gambling company in London. And I had had never in my life even been to a casino before. I had no idea what the industry was about. I never even knew that the industry kind of existed, right? You see Ladbrokes in the high street and William Hill in the high street, and you know the Hippodrome Casino in London and a couple of the others all around the country, but it was alien to me. I mean, I don't gamble with my money. I like to shop with my money. So it was really weird, but I remember going into the, into the office for the first interview and being completely blown away by the design, by how modern it was. The people walking past were beautiful. I'm like, oh my God, these people are so good looking. They're dressed amazing. And I remember telling myself, I'm going to work here. I swear to God, I remember saying, I'm, I opened the lift open, I looked around and I said to myself, I'm going to work here. And so I interviewed for the job. They and it was a job for an office manager. So I didn't really need to know anything about gambling. I just needed to know kind of admin and how to run an office, which I had done in previous years. So that didn't bother me. They then called me back again and said, you know, come for a second interview. And so I did, of course. Um, But by this point, I'd quit. And so when they called me back and asked me um, a bit more about my role and what I was doing currently, I had to be honest and say, by the way, I quit, which gave them a little bit of a curveball. And they they looked at me like, who is this girl? She's quit a job before being offered one. But I think they quite liked that. They quite liked the ballsy, okay, you took a risk and you took a gamble. And, you know, we quite like that about you. So they said, actually, we don't want to give you the role. And it was like a look of horror on my face. What am I going to do next? Um, And they said, we actually see something in you. We want you to come back and hire for an affiliate manager role. I'm like, yep, no problem. Whatever you want. I mean, at this point, they could have offered me any role. And I (laughs) said, yes. So the guy that was interviewing me, and and I think it was the CMO, uh, Chief Marketing Officer. So the the guy that uh, would have been my boss, he said, I'll follow up with you separately. And he emailed me a ton of information, like GPWA and Affiliate Guard Dog and Casino Meister. And if you're in the industry, those are names you'll know straight away. But he emailed me tons of links and was just like, just read all of this before you come back. <laughs> so I'm like reading all this information and thinking, what the hell? I have still no idea what is going on. I have no clue. So I went back for the third interview and it was quite quick, to be fair. So I think I was only out of work for a couple of two, three weeks, maybe. And I literally 
probably shouldn't say this, but I pretty much blacked my way through the interview. I had no, I still had no clue as to what an affiliate manager was. I had no clue what an affiliate was. I couldn't understand. And I remember just literally blagging my way through the interview. And they offered me the job. We, and I was absolutely blown away. And I remember the whole time keep telling myself, I'm going to work here, I'm going to work here, I'm going to work here. And I do believe now knowing what I know that that was part of the law of attraction, right? What you put out there to the universe comes back to you. And if you haven't listened to um, what our episode on law of attraction, I can leave a link to that, but, and you can do your own research and I'll do another uh, podcast in the next few weeks about it, I think, because it's really, really interesting. But because I kept putting that out there, it came back to me and I got offered the job. And I worked incredibly hard. I had to learn as I went. And my boss threw me in at the deep end. He made me call all the affiliates. And I was just so scared because I had no clue what I was doing. And actually, some of those affiliates I met back in 2016 are very good friends of mine now. So I've been very blessed that the hard work that I put in to learn the industry not only has led me to building my own consultancy business, but has led to some amazing friends. So don't be afraid of taking a risk. That's my biggest takeaway from today is don't be afraid of taking a risk because everything pays off. Everything is a lesson. Everything is a journey and it's your unique journey. So I'm not saying necessarily to quit your job without having a new one unless that's what you want to do but think positive about what you're doing put it out to the universe this is for me this is what I want to do this is my goal this is my aspiration and honestly it starts to come back to you you have to think about these things so I kept saying over and over I'm going to work here I'm going to work here and it came true and it might not come true immediately it might take years but you need to put that out there and you need to think about what you want what do I want and just keep thinking about it because subconsciously you start also working towards that so if you're thinking that you want to make a change in your career subconsciously you start watching videos or you start reading articles or you start networking with with people that will help you with that journey or you start going to the other department and going, actually, I really kind of want to get out of finance and want to get into marketing. So you kind of start making relationships with the marketing team a little bit more. So there's lots of ways that you can make those changes. And there's lots of ways that you can start changing your journey and changing your path if you wish. Now, <clears throat> that's not to say that this whole journey in the 15 years has been easy for me. It hasn't. It's been amazing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. 15 years have been amazing. And they, the first company were very kind to me. They gave me good pay rises. I had a lot of respect with the team. I made some great friends. Some of them are still in the industry now, which is amazing. Some of us are just Facebook friends, which is also amazing. I love, you know, keeping in touch with them that way. Um, and then I moved around a little bit after that. I just took some risks working for more international companies um, and working for people that I really believed in. So I don't like, for me, the massive corporations. So I tried to work for a big corporate company. It didn't work out for me. And I'm not saying that's not for everybody because some people like that structure. Some people like just going in, getting their paycheck and leaving. I like to be involved in other things and I like to try and put myself out there and I like to think outside the box. And I, and I, I like the quite dynamic, um, quick responses of companies as well. So for me, when you work for a big corporation, there's so much that's great about it. And, you know, there's a lot of protection for you. There's a lot of career growth, potentially. Um, hopefully, there's some of your companies support that. I know some don't, but there's career progression for companies. And, you know, you get uh, 
more pay rise options perhaps because there's a bigger corporation, they've got a lot of money. Um, but there's also a lot of red tape with that stuff. So if you've come with an idea or you want to make some big changes, quite often it can kind of get stuck through the hierarchy as well or through the technical capabilities. So there's a huge pipeline of things to implement prior to them even getting to your suggestion. So for me personally, I've always quite liked to go to the smaller companies just because they're a bit more dynamic and there's a lot more room for for kind of growth and change. And I like that, honestly, I like more of a family environment. That's always where I've thrived a lot more. Um, but I know I've got friends that work for massive companies and, and they've done amazing and they're very successful. So it's whatever you, you kind of find on your career path, what works for you and what kind of environment you like as well. And as you know, I've got two kids as well. So my kids now are nine and 10. Working for smaller companies has enabled me to work from home. And so I've always been really flexible being able to work around their schedule. Now, that's not to say that they didn't spend a few years in full-time daycare. They did. Um, but now they're both at school. I'm able to do the school runs. I'm able to sit and do their homework with them run them around to clubs, and then I can kind of adjust my working hours accordingly. So there's a lot of benefits with that, which is really nice for me as a, as a mother to be able to do that. Um, now, one of the things that was not so great about my industry, and if, I've kind of touched on this from the boss that led me onto this journey, is the way that women are treated. So I had an experience um, probably three or four, three years ago, I would say. And it threw me, actually, I was really, I don't know the right word, flawed maybe? I, and my partner was very unhappy about how I handled the situation. But basically I was meeting with a new contact. We were working together on some shows and some boosting kind of my profile, working together and stuff like that. And he crossed the boundary of what is professional to what is personal. And it, despite coming into the industry and being a handful of affiliate managers, which is quite a, <clears throat> I'd say a niche role, but it, over, the, over the 15 years, it's not. There's a lot of women now that are affiliate managers. And I'm so proud of that because it was a very male dominated environment. And it's so lovely to see how many women have come into the role over the years. And so I could always use my women ways. It was nice for affiliates and men to have a woman to liaise with and do business with. And so that in the years has given me the advantage, which has made me incredibly successful and has enabled me to, to build such a vast connection within the industry and not just in affiliates, but in lots of different areas as well and spanning quite a broad range of countries as well. I'm really, really blessed that I have friends in America and in Canada and in Europe and in Israel. I've got some incredible friends that honestly I could call at any time, day or night, and they would probably answer the phone to me and help me with anything that I need. And that's come from the career. And I'm so blessed with that. But this situation, despite being in the industry since I was 22, 23, it's never happened to me. And uh, this guy kept telling me, talking about my partner and how he wasn't worthy of being with me and I should be more like with somebody like him. And this was in the middle of the day. This wasn't even alcohol fueled, which, you know, not saying it's acceptable, but alcohol makes people do things they wouldn't normally do when they're sober. And so you learn to navigate that, regardless of whether you're out with your mates in the bar, right? You learn to navigate these situations. But this was in the middle of the day, stone cold sober. We're talking about um, a conf uh, attending a conference and being on a panel. And he started talking really inappropriately about this situation. And then he was manipulating the situation so that I would spend longer with him. And so he was trying to go, okay, let's, in, I'm going to, we're going to go here and I'm going to introduce you to all of these CEOs and these CMOs and, 
I'm going to get your name out there and all of this stuff. And, and I knew I had this bad vibe. And for some reason, I felt so frozen. And it's the first time in my career that had ever happened to me, honestly. And I didn't know what to do because I'm about to go on a panel in front of a thousand industry professionals. And I'm thinking, if I tell this guy to fuck off, what's going to happen to me when I get on that panel? Is he going to then try and destroy my career? I honestly, it sounds so naive and it nearly cost me my relationship about how I handled it because I handled it so badly. But I'm talking about it now for the first time actually ever. It's a really hard thing to talk about. And I can't believe I actually went down this road. This is what happens when you podcast. It's like journaling. <laughs> so you lead you on this journey. But I froze and I did not handle this well. And I did not, I tried my hardest and I said to him, remember he was like touching my hair and stuff. And I said to him, if you do that again, I'm out of here. Like, don't touch me. I'm out of here if you do that one more time. And he did it again. And I said, okay, like, I'm literally about to leave. You cannot do this to me. And it kind of calmed down after that. But it, he totally manipulated me and his position in the industry and my kind of fear, if you like, of not really knowing what to do. And the reality of what I should have done was got the F out of there. I should have bloody broke away and not worried about it and even cancelled my attendance on the panel because it was not right. And I know it wasn't right. And I don't talk about it because I am a little bit scared about what would happen um, if it ever fully came out about who it was or anything like that. I don't like that I don't like those situations and I never want anybody to ever ever be in that situation ever and if you are then you need to get the hell out of there and deal with the consequences because now I reflect on it and I've reflected on it quite a lot and um, like I said it nearly cost me my relationship because I handled it so badly and I, even for me I'm ashamed of how I handled it knowing how strong and independent I am and how secure I am in my career it's still through me and so if that ever happens to you just get the hell out of there and deal with the consequences afterwards and everything will be okay because you are in the right you did nothing wrong and I tell myself that I did nothing wrong this wasn't something that I did I was still professional I still tried to carry myself in a professional way and I never gave any signals otherwise um, and he took advantage of that and that's what I truly believe and that's what I that I stick to um, in my own head and I know that I am right and he is wrong and I never ever I'm going to let myself be in that situation again I know that for a fact um, so if you ever go through anything like that then please talk about it please if you want some support let me know if you want some help let me know. I am here for you. There's a massive support community in the industry. So don't be alone. And I hope that none of you ever, ever go through that because for me, it was scarring. And even now, I can't believe I'm talking about it because I've kept it so private for three years. But it's this is a journey and this is my honest experience of my career. And so if I don't share that, then I'm not being true to myself or being true to you. So please, if you ever feel like you need to talk about something, I have an open door. I have a, you know, you can call me, you can DM me and I will be there for you. So please don't be alone in any of these situations. So that was a bad time. <laughs> and I rambled on about that. But the industry isn't all bad. It isn't. And I have had the most amazing life and the most amazing career for 15 years. I have traveled all over the world. I've been to the Caribbean, I've been to America, I've been to China, uh, Israel. I mean, I literally cannot imagine any other industry where I get to travel as much as I do. And with some of my best friends as well, you know, people that I love, 
And back, I call it back in the day. So before there was a lot of changes in marketing and a lot of changes in budgets, we used to travel with our clients and with our affiliates. I used to hold corporate events. I say corporate events, really, just piss ups and travels. So I've been really fortunate that I took, I think, 10 affiliates to Curacao. We flew straight from the Amsterdam conference all the way to Curacao. We did ATVs, we did drinks. I hired an enormous boat. It looked like a pirate ship and we went um, sailing and snorkeling. And on that trip, I nearly drowned and I had to <laughs> the affiliates winch me back to the boat because I panicked that a fish touched me. I mean, there's so many memories from that trip that people, this was 10, no free kids. So this was 12 years ago. And I still have the affiliates today talking about how epic that trip was. Um, we, I took people to New York. I think I took eight affiliates and their partners to New York. We went to jazz bands. We went to Staten Island. It was incredible. And I'm really fortunate that this career and this industry has allowed me to do that. I even went to the... Playboy suite in the Palms Hotel in Vegas and held a party there and had 20 Playboy bunnies show up. I mean, my boyfriend is so jealous that that ever happened. He talks to all of his friends about it. And so even though I just touched on a not so nice episode in my career, actually it's been epic. And so if you're in the industry and you're not really sure where you want to go, you're not really sure what you want to do, or maybe you're just following my story, which thank you if you are, but if you are in the industry, it really is amazing. It's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing industry, and there's so much opportunity, and I met a few years ago I was at G2E in Las Vegas, and I met a couple of women developers there, so they were behind the scenes doing development, uh, which predominantly has been a male uh, part of the industry, but to, to see these women and young women as well, that was really, really lovely to see. So much diversity coming into the industry and in so many different roles as well. So there's lots of things you can do. There's lots of opportunities if you just open up and have a look what's there. Now I have a friend that left the industry and keeps trying to come back. She's like, I miss it so much. I feel, feel like it's kind of like mama, you either love it or hate it. But even if you're following me and you're listening to my story and you're not in the gambling industry, all of the things that I'm telling you, all of the opportunities are out there. So just be open and look where you want to go. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And don't be afraid to go for something you've never done. Now, I know it's harder because of COVID and so many more people are unemployed. And so, so many more people are going for jobs than they were five years ago. I understand. I do understand that. I understand it's really hard. Um, and one of the upcoming episodes, I'm going to cover some stuff about CVs and LinkedIn and your social profile and different tips and tricks on how to present yourself for interviews um, and for applying for jobs. So I'm going to cover that in one of the upcoming episodes. So look out for that. But just don't be afraid. If you think that something doesn't feel right, make a change. Like change the direction. You are the only one that can make this change for you and for your life. And no one has handed me anything that I have, right? I've gone through some crap to get here. Now I run my own consultancy business. I work at whatever hours I kind of want to work. If I want to work less, I work less and get paid less. If I want to work all the hours under the sun, I get paid more. I can not pick and choose, but it's afforded me the ability to kind of navigate this and look at other areas, which is now why I've been podcasting for five months. I love it. It's something I feel passionate about. It's why I'm going back to college and doing life, co life coaching. I've just done counseling, I'm going back to college. I'm fitting it in because it's something I believe in and I believe it's part of my journey. So yes, life is crazy. Yes, life is busy, but it's your life and it's your journey and you can always make it work. It will always 
work out for you if you just believe in it. And I can't say that enough. I know I say that all the time, but I honestly believe that based on all of my years of business and all of the stuff that I've been through, the good, the bad, and the incredibly ugly. So just keep persevering. And just one final thing to take away is thinking when you're doing reflection on where you are in your life and you're doing reflection on where do you want to be. So I hope that's one of the takeaways of not just knowing more about me and my career journey, but my journey in itself and how that relates to you or how you can take something away from my experiences. So life gives us what we can handle. So if you are given my situation, for example, with this guy abusing his position of power. So that was a lesson that I went through that I never will hope to go through again. And I hope no one else will ever go through that again. But that was a lesson for me of how not to handle a situation and actually how um, to come through the other side and what I would do if that ever happened to me again and how I would advise other people if they ever go through that of what to do in that situation. And I just look at that as a, as a life lesson, a bad lesson, but a, a life lesson. So when you're going through these things, think about your role and think about what your experience is and think about what do you get out of that? So what are the things that you love about what you're doing? So if you're currently employed, what is it that you love about that? So is it the role itself? And I hope that everybody has their shit figured out. So I hope everybody has their stuff sorted. You know what you're doing. You're loving your life. You're loving your career. You're loving your industry. So I really hope that some of my listeners do. But for those that don't, just work out what it is that you love about what you're doing. So if you're employed, like I say, think about, I love X, Y, and Z about this, but I don't love the company because of this. So for me, it was, I don't love big corporations. I love smaller businesses. I learned that and that's where I stick now when I work. Um, maybe you love, maybe you're in a small business and you don't love that. You want, you want more structure. You want more uh, corporate guidelines. And so therefore you look for a role in a different type, a bigger company, perhaps, perhaps that's your next route. Or maybe you're not, you know, you're not working and you think, okay, what do I love to do? Do you love to help people? Do you love being in front of customers? So maybe you need to work in retail or maybe you need to work in customer service. Maybe you can work in a hotel as a customer service manager or something like that. So there's lots of things out there. There's lots of opportunities. It's just pinpointing what it is that you love to do and going for it. So think outside the box, have a look at LinkedIn, have a look at uh, indeed.com or indeed.co.uk, whatever it's called. Um, look at your local Facebook pages. There'll be like a jobs in Kent or jobs in London. There's lots of things out there and places you can go. So if you type in specific keywords, it will bring up different industries that perhaps you never thought of before. And that could lead you on this incredible journey. And I really hope that I've inspired you today. I hope that you know a little bit more about me and my journey gives you a little bit of inspiration for your own career or for maybe launching your own business, taking that risk and going, do you know what? I can do this on my own. I can, I know what my package is. I know what my message is. I know what my product is. Just go for it. If I can do the podcast in launch a YouTube channel, you know, launch my own business whilst having two kids and going through divorce, then you guys have got this too. You can do it. I want to see your journeys. I want to hear from you. And I really hope that I've inspired you today. And for those of you that listen that are from my industry, thank you so much. That was my journey. And there is more to come over the years. I am not finished yet. So have a great day and tune in next week. Thank you.